What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Elden Ring walkthrough for another episode. Got a lot packed in on this one. Um, actually, in the last one, I picked up a um, sacred tier for my flask, and I didn't use it to level up my flask, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Um, so, yes, increase that. also have some uh, runes to level up with, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. Uh, let's see. I'll take, yeah, this is 25. The next, I'm going to get my endurance up to 25. I'll put some points into strength as well. Level 43, making some pretty solid progress. Um, so what we're going to do now is actually kind of a little secret in the round table hold. And I want to empty out my runes because if you fail here, the only way to... There, there's no way to like get your runes back and warp out, so to speak. So if you're about to do this as well yourself, make sure that you spend pretty much all of your runes. So I need, I think, like 5,000 more. Let's see what this gets me. That's close. Um, not quite. I need like four or 500 more. So I can easily get that. So I'm going to take another level here and get my runes as close to zero as possible. Because uh, where we're about to go is... A spot where if you lose your runes, it's very hard to get them back without killing the enemy. So if he's too hard for you, the only way you're going to be able to get your runes back is if you pick them up and then kill the enemy that we're about to fight. So um, as I said, I would recommend um, I would recommend spending as many of your runes as you can at this point. So what, what we're going to do now is there's actually a fight that takes place in the round table hold proper. If you jump over this balcony, there's going to be an NPC invader that spawns. Um, and we can attack down here. So the rules don't apply on the lower floor of the round table hold. So he's going to spawn like right around here. You can actually, if you're quick enough, you can watch him spawn and get a backstab before he can even attack you. Uh, I missed the backstab, but it's all good. So he's got a lot of frostbite type attacks and he also has some blood attacks and he just straight up is a spammer. Um, but uh, you see that his scythe there does a mixture of blood and frostbite damage. I mean, his attacks hit really hard. And he, he has one flask. He can heal a single time. Um, jump attacks, of course, work well. But then he, he you know, backs up and starts starts casting from afar. Um, if you can time it right, you can get a Bloodhound's Finesse in for some pretty solid damage. And I just got the bleed for the kill. Um, he, is, he is challenging. I'm not going to lie. He's challenging. Um, but for killing him, we get the Taunter's Tongue. Which, uh, this is a special item that is multiplayer related. The Taunter's Tongue, what it does is it allows you to be invaded even if you do not have helpers with you. So, um, this was the case in, in most of the other Dark Souls games where you could just be wandering along by yourself without any help and just get invaded at random. In this game, it's a little bit more friendly to the players to where you're generally not going to get invaded unless you have um, co-op players with you. But if you want to use the Taunter's Tongue, it will kind of revert back to the old ru rules where you can get invaded, um, even if you're just by yourself. So uh, if you want to encourage PvP, um, you can use that. And uh, let's see here. What we're going to do now is we're going to warp back here to uh, Liernia Lake. And we're going to knock out a, a, a decent chunk of kind of the, the southern portion of the lake and then the eastern part of the cliffs in this episode. I'm going to check the time of day. It's late day, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward it to uh, to morning. Just so we don't get caught up at night with something uh, that we don't want right now. Alright, so fast forward the clock. Um, so we're going to take a route, kind of, as I said, up through the lake. Um, we're, for starters, we're going to go uh, right here-ish is the site of Grace. And then right here are some ruins. Right here is an NPC side quest that we're going to... Uh, to do and then kind of like right here ish I want to say is the is, is the next part of that same side quest. So we're we're kind of making up a, a little path from from south, we'll say south to, to northwest ish. Um, so that's what we're gonna follow in general. Let's see all my waypoints are over here. So we're going to do a lot of horseback riding in this episode. But there's some stuff that we want to get. So there's some um, 
demi -hum human enemies. This one's on a horse. Now, don't don't be intimidated by this one. This is not nearly as hard as like some of the horseback bosses that we fought. He is definitely more the difficulty of a uh, regular enemy. And so that bell that he's ringing, that's that's summoning those little spirits. We're actually gonna get one of those in just a bit um, that we can use ourselves. Let's see, where are we? We gotta go a little bit further north. Okay, there's our grace. And here is our item. We got the Glintstone Craftsman Cookbook 2. Um, I'm gonna stay on foot because this is where the uh, Laskiar Ruins is our next kind of spot. This area, a bunch of demi humans are going to spawn. I recommend summoning your wolves because some of them are, there, there's there's one or two of them that are really, really tough. And our, our wolves, are, I, I'll show you what I mean. Our wolves are gonna help us out a lot. So these ones, not too much to worry about. But there's one that's gonna spawn that is extremely difficult, has really spammy attacks, can teleport, moves very quickly, can close gaps in no time, I think has poison attacks. I mean, it just really a pain to deal with. That's that's him right there. So watch, watch this guy. He can like teleport, um, he'll throw poison at you. Um, he has really spammy attacks when you get close to him. Like he, 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 you can see, you can see, like that. That's the that's the spam attack. I hate that attack with every fiber of my being. That spam attack. If you caught, if you're caught in the middle of it, you're dead. Um, so that's why I have my wolves here to distract him. And my wolves are actually doing some work, man. They're doing some pretty hardcore damage to him. So I'm gonna do a bloodhounds finesse to him and take him out. If you're fighting him solo, I fought those things solo before, dude. Ugh. Such a pain, such a pain, I'm not gonna lie. And really there's nothing here that's super important. Um, uh, but we have some smithing stone three. Um, and then there, there's some couple other things here too. Ritual pot. Okay, got him. Um, there's like an underground area um, over here. I'm just gonna keep my wolves with me. Because I think if you go far enough north, another one of those really tough ones is gonna, is gonna come up. So in here, we get the Wraith Calling Bell. That's the little bell that I was telling you about a minute ago that that guy was using to summon little uh, wispy spirits that, that I mean, they, they, they pack decent amount of damage. It, it, it causes, it, or it consumes FP to use. And over here, I think, is a rune. And then once we get this, we're going to hightail it out to the next area because I think another one of those big ones is going to spawn. I'm not going to... I'm not going to hang around to find out. I'm out of here. Okay, so in this little uh, gazebo right next to it, we have a telescope. So if you want to get that bird's eye view, as I've showed you before, you can do that here as well. Hello. But here we have an NPC who has a quest line for us. Hello. It's rather chilly here, isn't it? My mistress sent me off on an errand. But I was accosted by a ruffian. And now I'm in a bind. Could I ask you lend a hand? Perhaps. That thug made off with a precious necklace. I need someone to retrieve it. Only... He too is tarnished. If you've any qualms confronting your own, I shall find another. Oh, thank you dearly. What a blessing that we've met like this. The thug should be resting at an abandoned home down the way. Please, I must have the necklace back. The thug should be well Please. Okay, so we're going to get her necklace back. She has a side quest. It's not a, a, a quest that impacts any of the endings. It is not a quest that really impacts Platinum Trophy. Um, but we're going to do it just to show you uh, kind of what happens. So the next spot we're going is over here-ish. Um... There is actually a shack with this thug that took her necklace. 
Over here in these ruins, there's some things we can pick up. Some ruin fragments and whatnot. If you're into that. I'll throw my lantern on. All right, here we go. I'm going to take this marker away. This is what we're looking for. The Boil Prawn Shack. And there is a side of grace right here that we're going to rest at to kind of get our FP back. Okay. Let's talk to this guy. Don't kill him. Now, this guy does have a, a quest line that does impact one of the endings. Now, the ending that he is a part of obtaining does not, it does not impact a trophy. But if you want access to all of the endings at the end of the game, you need to keep him alive. I'm pretty sure. Do you want to start something, mate? Necklace, what you're after, is it? Mm. Well, show me what it's worth to you, and I'll consider parting ways with it. I'm not in love with it or nothing. You're a shrewd one, Chief. First, you hand me the runes, and don't try nothing, neither. Okay, so we actually have to buy the necklace from him, and that's just how it works. But you want to be nice to the girl, you got to do it. Take it. Things no damn use to anyone anyway. Your bloody idea, mate. Don't come crying to me later. Oh, piss off. What is it now? Oh, I see. You want some of me prawn? Freshly cooked it is. All right then. It's yours. If you can meet your price. I could be persuaded to sell you some other bits too, if you've got the runes. Okay, so he will also sell you these boiled prawns. These uh, are consumable that increase your defense once you eat it. Um, so you can just equip it with your items and get a bit, bit of a defensive uh, buff if you use these. I'm not going to buy any, but they're there if you want them. You can also learn more about Raya, who's the lady who we stole the necklace from. Oh. We just talked to before. So you met the girl, did you? All right, well. Sod the particulars of the matter. But it ain't my fault she's stupid enough to get duped, is it? Anyway, she ain't all right, that one. Lucky she ain't died on the bloody roadside, I reckon. Okay, so we're going to go on and get out of here. So where we're going next is we're going to kind of hop across these little islands here. So we'll hit up these two first. Um... And the second one's going to be kind of near that NPC. We can give her her necklace back. So up here is... Um, where is it? There it is. Pick it up. There we go. Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear. So that is something that you can put in your Physic Flask. It gives you a Dexterity Boost. And this little candlestick summons a little ghost that'll warp, that'll lead you to a dungeon. We're, we're going to find that dungeon later on in this episode anyway, so we don't need to do that. As I said, those ghosts move painfully slow. So if you're following it, it's going to take a while. But uh, I'm going to take you there later as well. So up here, uh, we have a side of grace. And we have our friend Patches. This is the second location. Oh, well, it's me. Patches, the untethered. Still in business, if you can believe it. Now I'm my only supplier, so I haven't got much. But everything here is top notch. Hatches Emporium, now open in Rea Lucaria. Okay, so we can buy everything that he had for sale before. I've already got everything from him that I want, so I'm not all that worried about picking up anything. But in case you missed something before, you can pick them up now from Patches. By the way, met that girl, Raya. She's a strange one, but I believe she was in need of help. Not that it's any of my business, but if she rings your bell, why not lend her an ear? You're making your way to the Erd Tree, no? Well, I heard something that might help. A special means of reaching your destination. Have you ever seen an Iron Virgin? 
The clunky contraptions are whirlwinds of sickles and spiked wheels. But long ago, they were endowed with a spell of transposition. And get this. A surviving virgin sits at the bottom of the big water wheel in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Its transpositional powers fully intact. So right, if you get caught in it on purpose, it'll chuck you out straight at the base of the Erd tree. Or so I'm told. <laughs> so what he was just saying uh, is half right. There is something at the bottom of Ray Lucaria Academy. This is the next big dungeon we're going to. And there is something there, but it doesn't do exactly what he says it's going to do. Uh, but it's all good. Uh, let's see. So we need to go back over here and talk to Raya. Let her know we got her necklace. Should be resting at ease. Oh yes, that is my missing necklace. Thank you kindly. I am in your debt. Did I forget to announce myself? I am Raya, in the service of Lady Tanith of the Volcano Manor. I seek stalwart tarnished who might join our house. You are very brave yourself. Not only a steady hand, but a steady heart. Merciless, even to your own kind. Such strength is precisely what my mistress seeks. Please, take this. Brave tarnished, seek the Altus Plateau, the realm of the Erd Tree. Most tarnished are doomed to wander the outskirts of the lands between, peering wistfully at the towering Erd Tree. But you are no ordinary tarnished. And once that is proven, the Volcano Manor will fully extend its invitation to fight amongst a family of champions. Okay, so Volcano Manor has a side quest and a dungeon um, to go through as well. We're going to be doing that much later on in the game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and warp back here. This will take us a little bit closer to where we're going next. So yeah, we'll be hitting up Volcano Manor in a bit but uh i would say probably a good 20 episodes from now you we could expect to get to volcano manor but we will be doing it um what we're going to do now is we're going to head over here if you remember in the last episode i said we missed a um a scarab for an uh uh ash of war um so from there we're going to head down here hit up these islands and then that dungeon that i mentioned that we're going to go to is right around this area so we're going to hit kind of those marks and in that order. And uh, first thing with, with that scarab. As I said, it took a slightly different route to the Albaneric village. Or the village of the Albanerics, whatever it's called. I mean, I took a slightly different route to it last episode than I normally do. Normally, the route that I go to get there has the scarab on the way. But uh, I don't want to... To miss it for you guys. I want you guys to, to have access to it if you'd like. Let's see, it should be in this poison swamp somewhere. Right in this area. I'm listening for the uh, twinkling noise. Got lots of crabs in the house. There it is. All right, we got Ash of War, Vow of the Indomitable. So these little islands that I marked, I mean, they don't have anything super important on them. They just have some crafting stuff. One of them's an Artaria leaf, though. 
and those are, are generally pretty good. You can use... They're, they're, the Arteria leaves are required for crafting Exalted Flesh. And if you're struggling on a boss, having the ability to craft Exalted Flesh is, is a big help. So the Arteria leaf right here. I think this one just has like a glass shard or something. I don't know. It's something super important. Just going to pick it up and run straight through. No need to fight him. So this one has a, a turtle on it. If you want the uh, turtleneck meat, you can kill it. But it also has the tarnished golden sunflowers. And so the cave that we want is over here along this wall. Oops, I can't pull up my map because uh, game thinks I'm in an encounter. Okay, so so this wall that I'm heading along, this is where the cave is, and it's on this along this wall to my left. Here we go. And this is an important cave. Um, as I said, we're doing this intentionally after doing the Albaner a village of the Albanerics because we talked to this guy here, old Albus. He gave us one half of the Halig Tree Medallion. So you need, in order to do what I'm, about, what I'm about to do here, is you need to have that one half. Otherwise, the NPC that we're going to encounter is not going to do what she needs to do. Um, so before you do this, make sure that you have this half of the Halig Tree Medallion. Then come down here because once you get through this cave, we're going to be talking to an NPC who's going to trigger a quest line based on the fact that we are already in possession of that first half. And this cave is pretty dark, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna pull out my torch too. Even, even though I have my lantern equipped, the, the torch is, is still helpful. I'm gonna rest, because why not? Um, how many runes do I have? Not nearly enough for a level, so. This chest is a freebie. Get another, get another Arteria Leaf. So there's a... Oh, that guy always grabs me. Dang it. So w whenever you're grabbed, mash all of the buttons and you'll take less damage. You'll kind of like... Mashing the buttons kind of pushes the enemy off. Um, up these rocks, there's, there's an item you see right ahead of us. Oh, I was trying to get a backstab there, but... Missed. Hefty beast bones. So we got a big guy here. Wait for him to attack, then jump attack him. Alright, so this, this is going to have one of the big demi-human guys, like the chief. Um, your special is going to do quite a bit of damage. Oh, jeez. I just got killed. Dang it. Oh, well. It happens. I'm going to go straight there without fighting any of the other uh, enemies. Man. That sucked. But it happens. It'll happen to you. It happens to me. It happens to literally all of us. If that guy had grabbed me again, I would have been so mad. These guys coming out of the woodwork to fight me here. Okay. Take two. There's other... The problem is, is that there are others, there's other ones hiding in the shadows that make this encounter more complicated than it needs to be. All right, I'm not going to get cute. I'm just going to grab my runes and go to town. Play things much, much more safely. There we go. It doesn't have to be difficult. <laughs> it's only difficult if you make it difficult. Um, pull my torch back out. 
And in here, we have a treasure chest. So the fight is worthwhile, at the very least. We get the spear talisman, um, and then enhances a certain uh, spear, like, thrust attack type stuff. Okay, so where we want to go next is you see there's a spot over to our left where we can drop down. Right here. So make sure you drop down on this ledge. You don't want to go all the way to the bottom right away because that is too big of a fall to survive. So you want to drop down kind of incrementally on these ledges here. All right, so the next one's right here. There's a little crafting materials on the way while we go down. All right, so down there is kind of where we're ultimately headed, but we can't go down there just yet. We got to take this path first. So in here, there are these snails. These snails kind of shoot blizzard attacks at you. So not super duper challenging, but if you don't respect them, they can uh, they can get you. And there's a bunch of them all right here. So if you have a weapon that has good sweep capability, such as the weapon I'm using now, you can take them out pretty quickly. Golden Rune 5, pretty solid. Okay. So there's actually another spot we want to drop down to first. Here we go. Before we're going all the way to the bottom. So we get some soft cotton. Then there's some stuff down here. Smithing stone four. I think that's our first one. Some more smithing stones and a lump of flesh. So in this room is going to be a bunch of these snails. I think that's all of them. So there's no fog gate here, but as soon as you go into this room, you're going to trigger the boss. This boss is tough. Not going to lie. Um, it's basically the same the same boss that we killed to get the sword that we're using now. He actually uses this very same weapon. Only difference is he's much faster. He kind of teleports. He hits really hard. So I'd recommend popping your physic flask right here. And once you walk in, summon your wolves immediately. It will take a lot of the aggro off of you and make it much easier to get hits. Um, you see, he, he, yeah, he means business. Um, just got to stagger on him. But yeah, he hits really hard. You see how he just kind of teleported there? He's very fast. And when you're facing him by yourself, very hard to hit. He has that, he has like kind of the same overhead slam that we're doing. And that's, that, that hits like a truck. If it hits you, oh, it does like half your health in one hit. Uh, much more manageable with your wolves, though, which is why I suggested uh, just bring your wolves in right when you get through here. If you die and have to come back, you have to go through the whole dungeon. You start back at the beginning. There's not like a convenient warp point right next to this boss room. And on your way back down, if you did die to this boss, there will be a fog gate there. Um, but for the first time you encounter him, there is no fog gate. So you get my shield back out. So on the other side, we are now on the other side of this cliff here. We're going to meet our um, NPC. I'm going to get the side of grace first, though, just because. And as I said, unless you already have the first half of the medallion, which again, you get right here, um, she's not going to uh, she's not going to follow the quest that we need. So we got another rune arc. Very nice. Very nice to be getting rune arcs. Fell tarnished. What do you want? I told the all hearing brute that I possess no such medallion. Or have you come to take more from me? Was my other half not enough? Oh. Do you speak true? So old Albus entrusted his medallion to you. <sighs> then I have no choice. But to trust that this was his dying will. Let's try again. I'm Latena. An Albanoric, the same as old Albus. My apologies for my coarse words earlier. I presume the worst. Seeing that you're another tarnished like that all-hearing brute. I hope that you will forgive me. Hmm. 
The medallion's better off in your hands anyway. Would you consider doing me a great service? I must go back. There is something I must do, even if I must say farewell to my wolf, Lobo. Will you show me the way? To the land of Mikola's Halig Tree. If you accept, I would gladly apprise you of the whereabouts of the medallion's other half. Thank you kindly. They say the other half of the medallion is beyond the Forbidden Lands, north of the Earth Tree, in Castle Sol, on the mountain tops of the Giants, accessible by the Grand Lift of Rold. Then I suppose it farewell, Lobo. My faithful wolf. My better half. I will go with the Tarnished, so that our journey will not have been in vain. Forgive me, Lobo. Okay, so she mentions that the other half of the medallion is in a place called Castle Soul up north. We're going to be going there much, 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 much later. We got uh, Latena, the Albaneric uh, Spirit Summon Ashes. Um, so she's more, that, that, that Summon Ash, she's more of like an archer type. Um, so she, she attacks more from range. Now let's pass the time here. I think it's getting to be night. Uh, yeah, I think it was getting to be later in the day. Okay. So we did that. She told us where the other half of the medallion is, and she travels with us. And there actually is a reward at the end of her quest line, so you do want to do this. You can still get both ha both halves of, meda of the medallion without her, but as I said, she does have a quest line that is, in my opinion, worth following. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna warp here, and then we're gonna we're gonna go up kind of the eastern side of the uh, cliffs a bit and do some stuff over there. Um, so where we're headed is there is a. Uh, a spirit spring jump like right here ish and then we're gonna go down here to the end of this bridge and then um up here around where this path branches out there's another um side of grace that we're gonna hit up There we go. There's our jump to get on top of the cliff. And one thing I want to point out once we get on top of here, we got a side of grace right here. One thing that I want to point out is that um, when we were exploring this area before, there's actually a warp gate in these ruins, the Laskier ruins. I intentionally did not go through that warp gate because it takes you to a place relatively far away. Um, and there's a place later on in this episode, like around here-ish, that has a gate that takes you to the same exact spot. So we're gonna go we're gonna go to that spot via this gate instead of that gate. It's just the way that I planned the route. Um, to me, it makes more sense for this particular episode. So um, just wanted to point that out that I did skip that intentionally. And I'm going the wrong way. These guys don't really care about them. But not really an issue. So down here you see we got another giant. You know the drill by now. Charge heavies on the legs. Critical on the head. And then repeat as needed. Oop. Got a little sloppy there. He's being a bit more aggressive than some of the other ones. I feel like he's attacking more frequently. There we go. This should take him out. If I can get it. There we go. Nope. One more hit. There we go. So in here, we 
got the tree spear. Pretty solid spear. I believe it takes faith and dex to use. Um, definitely don't have the faith, but probably also don't even have the dex to use it with this build at this point in the game. So we're going to warp back right here. Um, we're going to head north. I'm going to go ahead and take off this beacon so it doesn't distract me. Uh, here we go. And here we have these marionette archers. Oh, these things are so annoying. Um, I'm going to take these ones out first. Because they just rapid fire arrows at you. And it's quite deadly if you get caught. Like, look at how fast he's, he was firing those arrows. Like, if you get caught in the middle of that, you'll be dead. And there's the ones that carry swords. And they just, like, rapid fire their sword attack. There's a group of them. What we want right now is actually that... See that one in the balloon? Or it's just, There's not even one in the balloon. It's just a balloon. Just shoot the balloon. It'll pop. And you get a golden, golden rune tier 6. All right. So we're just going to head north until we get to our side of grace. And you probably noticed uh, in certain areas there, there are these, they look kind of like graveyards with a bunch of swords sticking out of the ground. You can always go up to these and read them, and they have like a little bit of a lore note sort of thing. This marks Melania's southward march. The blade of Mikola and her clean rot knights grant her wings never to be clipped. All right, so once we get the sight of grace, we're actually going to kind of loop back southward. Um, we're not going to progress north at this point. There's some stuff we got to take care of. Um, so where we're headed next is down to this area. Uh, this is known as um, the pet pur purified, I keep on saying petrified, purified ruins. Um, there's some stuff that we want to do down here. There's a lot of enemies down here too. You don't need to fight, but if you want to fight, you certainly can. And these guys are, you know, a bit stronger than the ones that we're, we're used to fighting, so... We're not one shot jump jump attacking. These dogs, man. Oh, they are so such a pain. Look at that. I did half my health. Just a few hits from him. This guy's got a horn. Take him out so he can't blow it and alert everybody to our presence. So you notice that most of the enemies in these parts use magic of some degree. And it makes sense from a lore perspective because this is where the uh, Rhea Lucaria Academy is. And that's where they, you know, taught magic. It's where the royal family is and they use magic. Um, so this region, the enemies are very, very heavy magic users. Um, so here, this is very, very easy to miss, but this platform here, you can roll through it and break it open and there's an underground spot right here. So in here, we have our second Shibiri grape. If you remember the uh, the the uh, grape Shibiri grape maiden, the first time we saw her was right here. We got our first Shibiri grape right here after killing um, Godric. Then we gave it to her right here. So our second Shibiri grape we just got, and she the maiden's actually going to be down here now. And so we're going to give it to her once we get out of here. We also have the two fingers heirloom. This is a talisman that you can equip. Uh, raises your faith. Okay, so we've pretty much taken everyone out over here. I'm trying to bust this skull up, and here we go. 
All right, another ghost. Offer the maid in our eyes, as I was just saying. He was referring to uh, Ayeta is her name. Got a golden rune. So around here is where the maiden's going to be. Just to show you on the map around this section of ruins right here. You see there's a giant lobster wandering around. And there's Hyetta. Hello? Is someone there? Would you donate any Shabriri grapes in your possession to me? I'm on a pilgrimage in search of the distant light. And when I eat one of those grapes, I can feel the light in the back of my eyes. You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? They rest their trembling hands upon me. Howling wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. Their frail fingers, emaciated. Yet still, they give me the grapes. But you seem somehow firmer. You are most kind, and may the blessing of the fingers... Okay. So that's all we need to do. She's gonna re she's gonna relocate somewhere else, and we're gonna have to give her another grape later. Um, I'm gonna take on one of these lobsters. These guys are really tough. I'm actually gonna throw on my physic flask here. These guys are really, really tough. Um, you basically gotta stay on them. If you can get under them, that's gonna be your best bet because they are super aggressive. Um, And you can see they they do pack a wall. These are these are honestly some of the hardest enemies in the, some of some some of the hardest regular enemies in the game. And they do have a nasty grab attack. Um, so yes, when he does that, if you dodge at the right time, you can get right underneath him and uh, get a few hits. But if you take the hit, if you dodge at the wrong time, you take a pretty massive hit. What I'm hoping for is a stun. I'll try to get a bloodhounds off, but missed it yeah you see how hard these guys are so that is his grab attack when he's winding up like that you do not want to get grabbed by the lobster oh my gosh dude yeah one hit almost half my health this is my last heal all right a fight to the death. There we go. Got him. Yeah, you see how hard these guys are? Sometimes you can get underneath them and, and wail on them a bit, and then that'll give you a um, an opportunity for a critical. But yeah, those lobsters I generally avoid, and that's why. Because uh, they, are, they are tough to kill. Alright, so where we're headed next is up here. Get rid of this dog. Another dog. Oh, jeez. And finally. Over here, we have our teleportation gate. And so the reason why I said to skip the one before is because this one right here takes you to the same exact spot. And just from a routing perspective, it made more sense to go there now than it did before. Um, because we're going to warp back to a side of grace that takes us right next to a, a catacombs that we're going to visit. So this takes us to just south of the academy. Um, if you remember what this guy here, we talked to him, I think, last episode at this church. He said that you can't get to the academy unless you have a glintstone key. We do not have a glintstone key, so we cannot get through here to get to the academy yet. But what this is, is this gives us a meeting place map. Um, so we can check it in, the inventory, in our inventory. So we have our meeting place map right here. You pull it up, and it has a location marked. Um... The sole means of gaining entry to the academy, a glintstone key. So this map tells us where the glintstone key is. And uh, you don't need to have the map to get the glintstone key, but this does tell us where it is. 
So we're going to unlock the Sight of Grace so we can come back here later. And then we're going to warp right back here to where we were before. And then what we're going to do here is there's a Catacombs, like right here-ish. And then there's a uh, Somber Smithing Stone down here that we're going to get. And then that's how, uh, that's going to be how we end this episode is, is with the Catacombs. Um, This Catacombs is a bit difficult. It is it is a slight step up in difficulty from, from the other ones that we've been doing. I'm going to put a marker right here as well because that's kind of the path down the cliff that we need to take to get to the catacombs. So that statue there, if you light it up, it's going to show you where this catacombs is. But we're just going to go straight there anyway. Um, so it is it is a slight step up in difficulty. The enemies are, are a little bit harder to kill. They take more hits and they hit a little bit harder. Um, but it is worthwhile going in here. We're actually going to get some, um, some stuff that we can use to level up our spirit summons one more level. I think there's another rune arc in here. So there, there are some goodies. It is worth the trouble. So the catacombs is right here. And I'm going to open up my map just so you can see exactly where I am right here. So I'm going to take away this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the side of grace here. And then I'm going to head south to get the uh, uh, somber smithing stone. And then I'm just going to warp right back here to the catacombs. Save some backtracking. So there are some tough enemies in this catacombs, but um, if you run out of, let's say, healing or something else, you can you can, you know, go back to the start and and re re up everything at the site of grace. So right here, this guy in the chair gives you a somber smithing stone too. Eventually, I'm gonna get a bow that we level up with somber smithing stones. Um, the uh, uh, grafted greatsword that I'm going to be using at certain points in time, is you level it up with somber smithing stones. And I said I was gonna, I was gonna warp. I ended up just talking and then riding back. But hey, it's all good. Okay, so lantern on. Ride the elevator face back. You're gonna be able to drop off and pick up some stuff. Right here. So we got grave glove wart. Tier two. And just drop right here to the bottom. So this is an imp catacombs, not a skeleton catacomb. So if it were a skeleton catacombs, I'd be using my katana with the holy buff. But uh, since this is an imp catacombs, I'm going to be using just my normal weapon. So you see four hits, four hits to take one of these out now. So again, if this proves to be too difficult for you, um, we're going to be upgrading our sword, if not in the next episode, in the following episode. And so if this proves to be too difficult for you at this point, um, you can just come back here later when you're a bit more powered up. Oh, man, look at that. Look at that damage. Jeez. It's not too, too overwhelming. But as I said, it is it is a step up in difficulty. Um, okay. So note, if you look down there, you can actually drop down. We're not going to drop down quite yet. That's going to be... We're going to do that after we explore this, this section of the catacombs. Right here is a trap. You can use it to hurt the enemies as well. But if you're not careful, you're going to hurt yourself. Okay. So here is a big guy. If you remember at the very end of Stormville Castle, there was one of these things. He's sleeping. You don't technically have to fight him, but I'm going to fight him. Jump attacks are your friend. Oh, I just got walloped. Fight him out here in the open. That's his grab attack. Dang it. Mm, I saw it coming and I was trying to dodge and I dodged too late. Bloodhound's finesse works really well on these guys too when you get an opening for it. But you see, he, he his attacks are... They don't leave you much of an opening. Take him back over here. Man, I'm just guzzling my uh, flasks. Ah, 
Oh, that's a grab attack. Okay, that did not go particularly well. So we got Grave Glove Work 3, so we can use that to, to um, level up our, our wolves. So I'm definitely going to need to, kind of halfway through, going to need to come back and replenish my stuff. So here, do a jump attack, do a Bloodhounds right after, and you're going to stun them. So that is very helpful. So if... Especially if you're struggling with those guys, as I said, jump attack. If you're using this sword, do a jump attack, do a Bloodhounds a special, and then he'll, he'll be staggered. That's how I'm going to fight most of these in here. So we got a Rune Arc. Very, very good. There's a uh, Stone Sword Key you can use here. And here is, is a Helmet. Not much to write home about, so use it if you wish. If you want to save your key, go ahead and save your key. As I said, the, the, the game gives you plenty of keys. Yeah, the Nox Mirror Helm. Not that great of a helmet, but... Got these guys throwing their magic stuff at you. If I'm not careful, I'm going to die here. All right. Watch out for the trap right there. Oh, I jumped on it. I jumped, I accidentally hit it, but I did. I very fortunately did not get hit by the trap because that would have been bad. All right, Grave Glove Wart 2. So there is, that takes us kind of back to, towards the beginning. There's a trap right here. You can use it to, to kill the enemies though. That is the nice thing about traps. You can use them strategically. As long as you know that they're there beforehand. So in here we get the scythe. And I'm going to use him to get some health back. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is... Oh, jeez. I forgot about... Oh, my gosh. I forgot about the trap. <laughs> so the next thing that we need to do is... I mentioned before, you can drop down here. And there's another section of the level down there. Which is actually how you get to the switch that unlocks the boss door. I'm in bad shape. So I'm going to head back to the site of Grace at the beginning. And rest up. To get my health back. And then we're going to continue and drop down to the bottom. And this is a decent break in the dungeon to do it because the section that we're about to explore now is completely different from what we just explored. So it's not like we're going to fight our way through all of the same enemies again. Oh, I rolled off the elevator. Oh my gosh. That was bad. That was really bad. I don't know how that happened or why that happened, but oh well. My ruins are right there. That was nice of them. All right. Might as well level up while I'm thinking about it. Um, I'll take my endurance up. Put my lantern back on. Yep. Watch your step. All right. These guys, I'm not even going to worry about. Just run straight through. So right when you get here... Go down the stairs and drop. 
So there are some of these guys down here. So, oh, he followed me, really? Two of them followed me. Good grief. Fortunately, this guy's not waking up. Come back here. Dude. Trolling me. All right. So jump heavy, Bloodhound's finesse, and you'll get the stagger. I meant to get the uh, riposte, but I missed it there. So Ghost Glove Wart 3. Very good. We can use that to level up the uh, other summon that we have. That we haven't gotten to use yet because it costs too much FP. But either in the next episode or the episode after, we're going to get the Cerulean tier, I believe, that you can put in your flask that negates MP or FP consumption for a time. And so what that means is you can use whatever you want, however much it costs, because the, M the uh, FP consumption is negated for that time. And so we'll be able to, to pop our flask right before going into a boss door. We'll be able to um, summon that summon that we don't even have enough FP for. And then... Uh, We'll be good. And that summon is one of the best summons in the game, so I'm looking forward to, to using it a bit. Some more Grave Glove Wart 3. You know, those guys, those, the, those larger guys are tough, but again, jump attack, do a Bloodhound's Finesse special, and then you should get a stagger as, as long as you get the, uh, the first step on them. So there's one down here. You technically don't even have to fight because you step on this trap here. Check this out. And that's all you got to do for him. Pretty nice. Okay. Nothing that we need in here except the ladder to go up. Another one of these guys. So, as I said, jump attack, Bloodhound's Finesse, stagger. He is guarding the Page Ashes. And here is our switch. Guys, of course, an imp ambush, because why not? Old fangs, crafting. All right, our door's open, so I'm actually, let's see. I think I'm in good enough shape to fight the boss. If I were not in good enough shape, I would go back and rest first, but I think we should be in good enough shape to fight the boss. I'm going to pop my Cerulean Tears so I can summon the Wolves. And I'll go ahead and pop my Physic Flask. And I'm going to summon right when I get inside. Unfortunately, it's another watchdog enemy. Fortunately, this one does not have any friends with him, so. So with the wolves taking the, uh, the heat off of you, easy to get some charged heavy and jump attacks off to, to get a stagger there. And those things you just kind of have to roll away from. And that is all. So compared to the rest of the dungeon, the boss is relatively easy. We get the uh, Kaiden Sword Ashes. Got some root resin back there. And we can warp on out of here.
Okay, uh, let's see. So that's all we want to do here. I'm just going to go ahead and warp back to the round table hold. It is our hub, so I'm probably going to be ending up starting and finishing most of the episodes in here. I don't think I have enough to level up right now, so I'm not going to. But uh, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope this has helped you. Hope you're enjoying your time with this game. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.